Today I'm going to show you how to place yourself in any movies using green screen footage. And this is starting now. <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Francois, welcome to this brand new channel and thank you so much for joining me on this beautiful day. This video is part of a playlist on how to learn After Effects where I teach you all the tips and tricks of the industry. Every week I'll be releasing new tutorials just like this one so make sure you like this video and get subscribed so you don't miss any future videos. Okay, so I've been making tutorials for just about over a month now and I've been gathering comments and ideas and questions from you guys and from anyone who's been seeing my videos. And by far the most popular request I've had so far was how can I remove green screen or how can I make green screen footage actually look good? That and can I speak without a strong French accent? Since I can't do anything about the latter, I decided to show you how you can place yourself in any movie. We're going to cover green screen removal of course, as well as compositing and color correction, which are sometimes overlooked in tutorials. Also, make sure you stick until the end of the video to learn how you can get your hands on some free, high quality green screen footage, just like the one we're gonna use today. As always, when using After Effects, you're gonna want to use the fastest computer you've got available. So since I've got an iMac, I'm gonna use my usual laptop. In this example, we're gonna alter a scene from one of the biggest movie franchises out there, Star Wars. More specifically, The Phantom Menace. Basically, in this scene, the bad guys get their bums handed over to them. And since I want the Jedis to really look good in this, I wanna make it look a bit harder for them. So I've called a friend of mine, his name is Jeff, and he's a space viking. So guys, this is Jeff. Jeff, internet, internet Jeff. Look at him, he looks like he's fresh off his viking spaceship, ready to kick some ass. I wouldn't mess with him if I were you. So let's start by naming this layer footage, duplicate it with command or control D and call this one matte, no, not mate, press enter and solo it. With the matte layer selected, I'm going to apply key light 1.2. Let's choose a mid tone green, this one should do. And this is where a lot of people get it wrong when removing green screen. If you start to fiddle with the settings to remove the grain here and some of the parts here, you're gonna end up making the actor transparent, which is a bit annoying. So instead of changing any of these settings just yet, let's select the uh, view to screen map. This is what we're gonna end up with. Apply a levels effect and adjust it until all of the actor is perfectly white and the rest is perfectly black. Now unsolo the matte layer and change the track matte of the footage layer to luma matte. And boom, right there, that's what's gonna make a massive difference to your green screen removals. So we're not actually seeing the footage from the keyed element, but rather we're using the keyed element to determine the limits of the footage that we want to see. Clever! Since the edges are still a little bit too hard, let's add a fast blur to the matte layer. Somewhere around 0.2 should do the trick, just enough to feather the edges a little. Now let's go back in key lights and maybe shrink these uh, edges a little bit. Somewhere around minus 0.5 or negative 0.5 if you're American. Is that right? Is that, is that how you say it? I don't know. We're almost there with the green screen removal, but the edges are still very green, even though we've just done a key. Hmm, what to do, what to do? Select the footage layer and add a change color effect. With the color picker selected, select one of the dark green pixels like that. This should do. Adjust the hue and saturation so that the green goes away, but without making it look weird or almost black and white. Also play around with the matching tolerance and softness sliders. The last one is gonna add a bit of a fall off to the effect so it doesn't look too visible or abrupt. So before and after. Et voilà, the key is done. Now let's see how we can blend the two shots together, the original movie and our Space Viking. Oh hi, thanks so much for making it this far into the video. I'm very new on YouTube here, so you would really help me grow my channel and get my videos recommended to other people. If you could like this video, drop me a comment below and get subscribed. Now back to the cool part. So before we do any color correction, we're going to do what we call a light wrap. Light wrap happens when the light behind a subject gets diffracted before hitting the camera sensor. It looks like the light is wrapping around the actors. A little bit like if I do this, you'd see a bit of light wrapping around here. Let's pre-compose the backplate in the main composition, call it light wrap. And in the key composition, select both clips and pre-compose them as well. In the same actor key composition, let's add the light wrap on top of the actor. If your two footage don't line up like this one, you can use the two com view to uh, line them up together. To do this, you have to lock the main composition and click on this one to open the one that you want. Then select position and scale and try and match that until you're happy with it. It doesn't have to match perfectly. If you can, great. Otherwise, it just needs to roughly get where the highlights and the, sh and the shadows are. Add the set matte effect to the light wrap layer. Select the layer below, take invert matte and untick the one below. Now let's add a fast blur to it. 
set it to 10 for now. Finally, add another set matte effect, set the matte to the keyed layer, untick stretch matte to fit, and this time don't invert it. Now we end up with this. We can adjust the size of the light wrap by simply increasing or decreasing the amount of blur until you're happy with it. Finally, light wrap does not happen on darker colors. Like the name suggests, it happens on light and bright colors. So let's set the blend mode of this layer to something like color dodge. I like the look of this. Now it's only applying the lighter part of the light wrap onto our Space Viking. Now onto color correction. Basically, when you're trying to match two different shots together, all you're really trying to do is to match the hue, the saturation, and the brightness of the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. Simple. In our case, some of the shadows look a little bit too bright. So let's add a curves effect and push the shadow down a little bit. You can adjust the midtones as well whilst we're at it. Since Jeff is a little bit too saturated, let's add a tint effect and set it to 43. And finally, let's add an effect called CC Toner. As you can see in the effects panel, this effect samples the colors of the highlights, the midtones and shadows, and applies them to the corresponding areas of the layer. So click on the first color picker and pick a bright color. Somewhere around here, which is the brightest part of the footage, which makes the brightest part of the Space Viking footage the same color. Do the same with the midtones and with the shadows. Finally, adjust the blend level to let some of the original colors through. Somewhere around 42 looks good. Almost there! Almost there! Resize it and place it in the shot, like in the example in the intro. Let's bring one here so we don't have to do any rotoscoping around this weapon. The last thing we have to do is add shadows. And it's really easy in our case because there aren't any. Well, that's not actually true. There are some very, very soft uh, contact shadows like you can see under this guy's foot over here. So add a new solid layer and select the color of the shadows here. For now, mute this layer and select G to bring up the pen tool and draw a mask around the foot. Here you can do it really close to the actual foot, you'll see why in a minute. Let's do the same for the other foot. Unmute the solid layer and place it under the actor key. Now press F to bring up the mask feather and feather those two masks a bunch until you're happy with the result. Create another new solid with the same color, this time for the shadow of the body. Mute it and draw a rough mask on the floor and feather it a lot. And that's it! We're done! If the camera was moving, we'd have to track the footage, but I'd like to do a proper in-depth tutorial on how to track anything. For example, when you have an easy background video with minimal camera shake, as well as if you have a hectic shot with barely anything to track. So we're not gonna get into this today, but make sure you smash that like button if you'd like to see me cover this in a future tutorial. If we manage to get at least 20 likes, I'll make sure to make a full video on motion tracking. As always, in all of my tutorials, I don't like to leave you guys with no free stuff to download. So if you'd like to get your hands on this green screen footage and even more, a lot more, you can head over to the link in the description below. It's all free and courtesy of the good people over at Red Giant. Also, if you make Jeff, our space viking, or even better, yourself appear in any movie, make sure you post it on Instagram and tag me in it so I can check it out. There you go, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something useful. If you did, and you didn't mind my accent, you can like this video, get subscribed, and hit the notification bell. Also, if you want me to cover any particular technique or subject relating to visual effects, drop me a comment below and I'll make sure to answer every single one of them. Finally, if you're wondering what to watch next, I recently did a tutorial on how to remove any moving object from a video. I recommend you watch it now. Thanks again for watching, my name is Francois. See you in the next video. Pew!